What will I respond on the day of judgment when Allah asks me, why did you say this? And this is why the Messenger of Allah والسلام, made it very clear. You are safe for as long as you remain silent. But from the moment you speak, it is either in your favor or against you. Reading the Quran is one of the best things one can do to improve our character and what better time to do it than in the month of Ramadan, inshallah. This is why this Ramadan, we are gifting a beautiful and bespoke, specially designed Cambridge Central Mosque branded Qurans for those donating hundred pound or more through our website, inshallah. Beside encouraging you to read the Quran yourself, it also makes a perfect gift in Ramadan, which is of course the month of the Quran, alhamdulillah. But you will have to be quick as there are a limited number available. Donate now to gift the gift of the Quran this Ramadan, inshallah. Visit cambridgecentralmosque.org slash Quran 100. We wish you have a wonderful, blessed month, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'du fassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We all know how difficult it is sometimes to see our own mistakes while it is also oh easy to see the mistakes of others. The problem in reality is when we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will only be asked about our own mistakes. تلك أمة قد خلت لها ما كسبت ولكم ما كسبتم ولا تسألون عما كانوا يعملون. يعني this is a generation that has passed. They have gone with their deeds and you will go with your deeds and you will not be asked about what, about what they have done. So it is very difficult to see one's own faults because we have that self-defense kind of modus that we find ourselves in. Whenever somebody tries to correct us, when somebody tries to advise us, it is very easy to become irritated. It's very easy to actually lose our patience and start not listening to what they are saying because we're just listening to that inner voice that is telling us you are almost pitch perfect. You are almost without flaws and mistakes. How dare they? Now, this is exactly where the problem lies. And this is why Imam Sha'arani, rahimahullah azawajal, this great Shafi'i scholar of the 10th century, made it very clear in his book, Tanbih al-Mukhtarin, where he said, I'm surprised when I look at people and see that they seem to be hating people because of possibly detecting one mistake. And they keep on loving themselves while in reality they are aware of their many mistakes. And this is very true. Often we hate people for reasons that we find within ourselves. We break up these friendships just because we seem to be finding in people what we are guilty of as well. And online presence hasn't made this much easier. You know, when you see the way that people talk to each other online, it is as if they were the judge, as the internet was the court, and they were the lawyer, and they were the accuser. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you start typing words that you can never retrieve, that you can never take back. It is out there, maybe until the day that we die. And this is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it so clear when he said, do not say anything today for which you will have to apologize yourself tomorrow. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it very clear and very obvious that people who speak without using their minds will eventually lose their minds on the Day of Judgment. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ لا يلقي لها بالا. And a servant may say a word, utter a word that he doesn't deem to be that important. He doesn't think that this word will follow him until the day of judgment, like the tail follows the head. And he said, and this word that he has uttered will lead to the anger of Allah, يوم القيامة, and will be the reason why he will be thrown into hell for a distance of 70 years. So this is why Ibn Abi Dunya rahimahullah dedicated an entire work to the world of the tongue, which he called Kitabu Samt. And there we find that people said, why would I be criticizing others while I will be the one who will be investigated, observed and examined on the Day of Judgment? There is not a word that he or she utters or scribes already ready to write it down. 
What will we say on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of these many words that we have said but that we have forgotten about? The scholar said, what we fear most are not the sins that we remember. Because the sins we remember, we will eventually end up repenting for. But the sins we do not remember are the ones that we will take with us into our graves. And that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, on the day of judgment, a Muslim, a believer will come forward and, and find mountains of hasanat. But he slandered and he lied and falsely accused and gossiped about such and such a person. So these people that he has spoken ill about or for, has for, ha, had falsely accused will come to him on the day of judgment and they will ask him, where are my hasanat? And then when he will start giving them from his hasanat until no hasanat remain, he will start receiving their sayyat. One sayyi'ah after the other until he will be thrown with their sayyi'at into hellfire. Muhammad والسلام, made it very clear that when people see somebody who is being gossiped about or somebody who is being lied about or somebody who's turned into the center of mockery and doesn't stand up for the right of that person that he will be unveiled his mistakes or her mistakes will be unveiled on the day of judgment that person will regret it when he or she returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in reality whenever you want to speak you are freeing or unleashing rather an untamed beast which is called the tongue haven't you seen how the tongue never gets tired you keep on talk you keep on talking all day long and you never came home and said wow my tongue is tired but whenever you would train your biceps for an hour or two then you will you would be unable to lift your glass or to to i don't know to pick up a book or whatever it may be because you feel that you have overdone it that you overworked that biceps so this is not the case with the tongue because the tongue was created to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without limits. The tongue was created to ongoingly, effortless, effortlessly indulge in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have used that amazing strength, that amazing power that Allah has given to that tongue to backbite, to slander, to complain, to gossip. And, and this is why our scholar said that you will not be able to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that true connection with Allah jalla wa ala, unless you stop talking bad about people. When we are on the internet, it, we feel ourselves as if we were these keyboard warriors that are protected against all harm. We actually are not aware of the harm that we afflict upon people whenever we write things that may hurt them, hurt their lives and endanger their their social or financial circumstances and and we don't think about that we don't think what it does to them as a person as a father or a mother as a parent or as a child as an employee or employer and and it's better to remain silent because we were not asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the judges we were not asked by Allah wa ta'ala to be the lawyers that is what courts are for and and we are not these people who were allowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to just keep on talking about people, but also not we were not allowed to witness whenever people speak ill of others. Muhammad والسلام, made it very clear that whenever you are in the presence of somebody who speaks ill of someone else and you do not stand up for that someone else, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stand up for the honor for the sake of that brother, that sister, that human being on the Day of Judgment. It goes as far as to say that it would even be haram to speak ill of birds and trees and plants and dogs and swine. <laughs> Imam Subki rahimahullah azawajal, yani was, yani, or the son of Imam Subki found himself sitting at the door, at the doorstep and uh, a dog appeared and he said, get away from me, oh dog. You son of a dog. And even when you hear me saying this, it really feels like, well, it's, it doesn't sound right, does it? Although it's a dog. And it is the son of a dog. 
And his father said, we were not allowed as Muslims to insult dogs. He said, my dad, it is a dog and it is a son of a dog. And Imam Subki said, but this is not what you meant. The honor of dogs, the honor of animals in general, and he is respected by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Al-Qaswa, the camel of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi wa sallam, didn't want to go any further, the people said, Al-Qaswa is stubborn. She's stubborn. She's a stubborn camel. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, she is not. Walakin, but rather the one who has stopped her from going any further is the same one who stopped the elephant um, of going any further when its owner wanted it to destroy the Kaaba. So the Prophet ﷺ would stand up for the honor of, the, of people and of animal and, and animals and everybody and everything else. So this is why whenever you say something, then you should think like that pious servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said, whenever I open my mouth, I know that it is either in my advantage or it is in my disadvantage. It is in my favor or against me, Yawm al Qiyamah. Whatever you say can be used against you in the court of law. So if we know, he said, or rather he said, I have not spoken for 30 years before asking myself, what will I respond on the day of judgment when Allah asks me, why did you say this? What was the reason behind you saying this? And this is why the Messenger of Allah والسلام, made it very clear. You are safe for as long as you remain silent. But from the moment you speak, it is either in your favor or against you. And when the Prophet وسلم, was asked, what is the reason why or the biggest reason for people to end up in hell? He took hold of his tongue and he said this. He said this. And when Mu'adh radiallahu anhu asked the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and will we be taken into, will the words, yani will we be taken into account for the words we utter? He said, Ya Mu'adh, people will be dragged on their, their faces into hell because of the words they say. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that people will scratch their own faces until no skin is left on their faces on the day of judgment. They said, Ya Rasulullah, who are these miserable people? He said, here are those that used to gossip about people. One day the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he asked his companions, do you smell what I smell? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, it smells like rotten meat. And he said, well, this is the smell that comes or that leaves the mouths of people who gossip and slander. Imam al-Munawi rahimahullahu tabaraka wa ta'ala in Fadl Qadir, he said, what we take away from this is that people back in the days, because their hearts were so pure, because they were so sincere, because they were so devoted to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and submitted to him, he said, they would smell the terrible smell or stench of sins. But we don't smell that anymore because we have buried our soul beneath the soil of sin. So if you know that the world of the tongue is an amazing one, it is the tongue is one of the most strong things. It can build worlds and it can break worlds. It can make it and it can break it. It can shake it, it can give it and it can take it. People get married by saying yes. People get divorced by moving the tongue. People get, start war, wars by saying something and stop wars by saying something. With your tongue, you can make somebody happy just saying a kind word. Or you can make somebody sad by breaking their heart. The tongue is a universe on its own. So if you know that this tongue is that miraculous universe that has been given that unlimited power by Allah then it is not to use it to dig your own hole into hellfire but it is rather to climb yani, by the words you speak to the highest levels of Firdaus and the beautiful gardens of Eden you are literally in charge of that tongue 
And I want to end on this note where one of my scholars once said, the reason why we have been given two ears and one mouth is because we have to listen more than we speak. Because we were meant to listen more than we speak. And that tongue is literally imprisoned behind our teeth and, and, and our lips. And if somebody would try, and don't try this at home, if somebody were to try to open our mouth with force, that would be almost impossible. This is how strong we are. Allah has given them this mouth, the power to remain closed. And it can only be opened by your brain, by what you want to say, by your heart, what you feel you want to say. So this is why whenever you write something, whenever you say something, know that it will follow you. Know that you will be asked about it on the day of judgment and you are not a judge. You're not a lawyer. You're not the accuser. You are but a servant who will be asked about his or her own shortcomings and mistakes and flaws. Investigate yourself, examine yourself, and keep on asking Allah wa ta'ala to guide you towards that what is of benefit to you and to protect you against that which will be of no benefit to you, rather that which will harm you on the day of judgment. I ask Allah the Almighty, to make this beneficial. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.